Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Barker, the Director of Research Software Alliance, and a huge thanks to Joris and all of the amazing team at the Netherlands eScience Centre uh, for getting us here today. I'm just going to speak uh, for a few minutes to do a bit of positioning about why we're here and what we might be trying to achieve. My slides are available uh, publicly at that URL, tinyurl.com, IFW for International Funders Workshop, uh, dot dash Barker, uh, my surname, because I'll be going quite quickly through them, but there's lots of detailed information if you want to uh, look at them and click on some of the links. I really wanted to start uh, with a moment, to reflect that this is a moment, that this is a fantastic stage in the evolution of the research software community, uh, where we've reached this point after so many years, where we have so many of us coming to get together here today to think about how to continue to support research software and the people who develop and maintain it. And there certainly has been a lot of fantastic work done uh, over a number of years uh, to further the cause of recognition of research software. These are just a few examples of some in more recent years, uh, starting with OECD's revision of a recommendation on uh, research data, public access to research data, which was expanded to include software and code. UNESCO's recommendation on open science too, of course, has an emphasis on open software. There's some other reports there done by the Netherlands, by Australia, a UK report on the arts and, arts and humanities research community. Uh, we see communities forming over the, all over the world now. An example there is the Research Software Engineering Association of Asia. And we see workshops happening, thinking about diversity, equity, and inclusion in uh, this world. A few more examples, uh, similar communities starting in Africa, other examples there from Canada and France. Uh, we see more standards uh, and principles being developed, such as the Force 11 software citation principles, the Fair for, Re for, Fair for Research software principles, uh, and we see evolution now around thinking on things like career paths. So there's been lots of fantastic work happening, and I really want to make sure we celebrate that. To think about how, how we got here, how does this evolution happen? Uh, I'm going to use a framework uh, that some of you probably know well from Brian Nozick at the Center for Open Science. Uh, it's a cultural strategy change framework which could be applied to any situation. But it says to get some group of people to a different place, different practices, different processes, there's a number of different things that have to happen. So he breaks it down to five levels. Uh, policy to make it required incentives to make it rewarding, communities to make it normative, and I've altered his original uh, definition uh, to make the next one skills and training to make it easy, and infrastructure to make it possible. So we can see in the research software community examples of organizations or projects or uh, community grassroots initiatives that look at all of those different parts of the circle. This is just a sample of some of the research software community. And so some of them work on one, two, or three of those circles. Some of them work at the intersections. And of course, there's a global community uh, enabling this to happen. Again, just a tiny fraction of, of some of the people uh, who are we are uh, thinking about uh, their work today. So I wanted to make sure, given that so much of the research software community isn't here, uh, that it's so many more of uh, the funders uh, wanted to uh, keep the people that we're uh, thinking about at the forefront as well and recognize their work. So we're at a moment in time where those five circles are starting to come together. Very exciting. There's been different pieces, pieces of the jigsaw, and they're starting to coalesce, and we're getting glimpses of that beautiful golden heart at the center where all the pieces are aligned, and we might have a geographic area or an institution or a disciplinary area where they're all starting to coalesce and we're starting to see what could happen if all those pieces were there to support research software and the people that develop and maintain it at the same time. It's also a moment to reflect that there's still lots of work to be done, of course, there always is. Uh, so here are some recent headlines uh, that highlight some of the issues, such as the need for um, investment in di digital research infrastructure, particularly to enable maintenance funding for research software investments. You can look at them more yourself uh, in, if you're interested. And also worthwhile reflecting that my nice neat diagram of five overlapping circles isn't really what's happening. Uh, the world actually looks a bit more like this, a bit more chaotic and disjointed, that some of those circles have different emphasis, don't necessarily, necessarily uh, overlap very well with some of the other pieces. 
And it's my hope that over the next couple of days, we think about how we get to here, this next stage of evolution, uh, where the circles are uh, even and nicely, uh, nicely designed, but overlapping even more, and that beautiful golden heart at the center, uh, where all the pieces are together at the same time, just continues to grow. So we overcome challenges such as a funder may decide to implement a policy that enables principal investigators to be research software developers. Uh, but you may have the institutions, the research performing institutions, have their own policy that disallows that because they're not seen as researchers. So that's the kind of example where you have a mismatch, where one piece of policy has happened, uh, but another piece hasn't. As another example, a funder may encourage and support software citation uh, of research, out of software, research software outputs. Uh, but the infrastructure to make that very easy and the culture to make that normative uh, doesn't really exist yet. There's lots of great efforts, uh, but there's always more work to be done. Just to speak a little bit about my organization, the Research Software Alliance. Uh, so as Joris said, uh, we aim to increase recognition of research software and the people who develop and maintain it. And we do that by bringing research software communities together to collaborate, uh, and we work through those organizations. We run a research software funders forum, which has been a bit of a precursor uh, to these two days. Uh, we meet monthly online. We have about 45 people from 25 different funding organizations involved at the moment. You can go onto that link and look at the terms of reference, uh, who some of the other attendees are, and there's a bit of a breakdown there of uh, some of the demographics. But uh, we certainly are always interested in, in having uh, new members. And certainly hope over the next couple of days we can think about how that forum can also continue some of the discussions that happen here. I'm almost finished. Uh, a moment also to look forward. So I wanted to invite you all to think over the next few days, what is success going to look like? Uh, apart from the declaration, of course, uh, what else do we need in the short and long term? And a good way to start doing that is to focus on what your own challenges and needs are or areas of best practice that you want to share with others. We hope that the next two days will provide an opportunity for you to find others who could benefit from your expertise or have the same problem uh, so that you could work together on some of those because we all know that the sum of the parts uh, usually ends up uh, weighing more than the sum of the whole and we end up with a solution that has much more impact but also solves uh, your organization's original problem as well. So I'd just like to acknowledge all the Research Software Alliance supporters, our founding members and supporters who work with us in other ways. And I look forward to talking to you all over the next couple of days. Thank you.